Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Podcast, a podcast about getting out from behind the keyboard and just talking. Each week, we invite a guest or two to sit down and talk about their life and their work. I'm Christopher Brown, your host, and this is the Cross Border Interview Podcast featuring Mike Nash of the Prairie States. My guest today is Mike Nash, uh, one of the band members for the Prairie States. Mike, thank you so much for doing this. Hey, no worries. Uh, Glad to be a part of it. Hey, my first question to every musician that I ever speak to is this. What does music mean to you? Oh, uh, (laughs) jeez. An outlet, a community. Like, it really, it's, it's those two big things I know for myself. Uh, and even the band, like we kind of, we really noticed the lockdown when we couldn't rehearse. Um, just that lack of just that automatic hang every week with your buddies playing music, uh, not having that, you start to get a little, get a little shack wacky. And um, yeah, no, so it's, it's, it's an outlet. And it's also just that, uh, that community that you rely on. So. And where does the band come from? Where does the band, where, where did, where did the band start from? Because uh, my listeners from around the world might not know who the Prairie States are. So explain to the listeners who are listening in Australia right now in Ireland, who the Prairie States are. Yeah. The Prairie States are a band uh, that formed it was basically a Jeff, our band leader um, was out on a radio tour with a friend of ours, Jay Sparrow. Um, and he was out doing uh yeah, they were out promoting a single of Jay's and they were at one of the radio stations um, and the MD was uh, managing uh, a young guy who ended up becoming our singer. Uh, yeah, Matt. And, and so as soon as Jeff heard him sing, um, he was all on board. He was, you know, they got together, started writing um, and then they had formed a, a cover band just to get, you know, get a little more sea legs for, you know, playing live. Uh, and then when the original music started rolling, they pulled me and I was living with Jeff and Jay at the time. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, Hey man, we need somebody to play bass. Like, can you I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm in. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, so it's, it basically is just a bunch of friends from here in Edmonton. All, we were all in this little, uh, kind of music circle here that we all hang and, and, uh, yeah, we just formed the band and started, you know, ripping off originals and, and, uh, we got a small grant from the Edmonton arts council that, started it all for us we put out our debut record and um haven't looked back since so it's all been just been rolling since then and that was in like i mean that was only four years ago so well and and that's what i find so fascinating about the story of the band is you've gone from zero to 60 in four years you have been nominated for countless country uh, music uh, uh, country music of alberta awards and Mm -hmm. you are uh recognized across alberta where do you where do you give that credit to? Is it the dedication that the band has to continuously do better and continuously put out music and continuously connect with the fans? Or how would you say you have gone from where you were four years ago to, to where you are today? Yeah, I think a lot of it is just that we're relentless. We we just don't slow down, no stop. And I mean, we always say no slow, just go. And uh, so it's, um, yeah, With after that first record, we were, um, shortly in, entered into this, uh, you know, uh, development program, project wild, and that really, uh, sharpened our skills and, and really got us in that flow of always working nonstop. Like you just, uh, as soon as one thing's done, you're working on the next thing. And, uh, and, you know, we're planning way in advance. And, and so things like that really got us, uh, ready to roll for the the music business side of things. And then we just love writing and playing. So it helps that we like putting out music and we, and we just haven't stopped. So, you know, it, as soon as that first record was finished and we started putting out our singles, um, you know, early in 2020, we just haven't stopped. And, and we've got a bunch more that are, you know, we're going to be putting out music, you know, 
we're ready to go right until mid 2022. So, <laughs> Hey, that's awesome. So let's talk about that music style because I always find it fascinating when I talk to musicians about where does the music come from? So for Prairie States and for yourself, because you can't speak for all the band, but for yourself and uh, in general, the Prairie States, where does the music come from? Is it music first and then uh, the story behind it? Or is there someone who comes to the band and say, okay, I have this idea for a song. I'm going to pitch it. And this is, how we're going to do it. So for, for, from your perspective and then from this uh, band's perspective, how does the music come about? I mean, it, um, we're very much a country band where it's, you know, we're writing songs, you know, it's, you know, a bunch of people, we, we have a, you know, a bunch of people we like to collaborate with other songwriters uh, all over Canada and some of the States. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, now it's getting over, getting together over zoom or Google meet or whatever it is. And uh and yeah, we'll, you know, write. And then, uh, you know, the, the songs that are really, really hitting, um, then we'll bring them into the, <coughs> the jam space and, and start working through, you know, the musical portion of it and really sharpening it up. And, but, uh, yeah, you know, in that case we're, you know, we've all come from kind of like other genres and other things like that. And I remember back from my like rock and roll days, it's like, it always felt like there was, you know, one person kind of doing a bunch of things. And then it was like this, yeah, only one guy writes the lyrics because it's, it's all this, you know, all his feelings and stuff. And it's like, now it's kind of like, well, let's, there's a lot of stories that we want to build in and life experiences and not everyone's experienced the same thing. So by having a bunch of different people, you know, collaborating and creating these songs together, it, it really uh, opens you up to, to a lot more uh, things that you can write about. So. And you mentioned it briefly, and I want to dive into it a little bit here before we continue on, is the pandemic. You've, like you said, you've been a band for four years now, and two years into the band, you have to lock yourself down, or almost three years into the band, you have to lock yourself down, and it changes the way that bands interact and how you can uh, uh, communicate with each other. Because as much as uh, it's great for people like myself who can communicate with uh, people like yourself over a Zoom, uh, I imagine for a band, it's a lot harder because being in the same room with someone compared to being on an internet connection with someone is yep. a lot more difficult to adapt to. So how have you guys been able to manage this whole pandemic as a band and continue to, like you said, plan for 2022 and beyond? Yeah. I mean, we were super fortunate that we had songs already in our back pocket recorded, um, for, you know, within 2019 that we, we had a bunch of stuff ready to go for 2020. So we were very lucky that we had planned well enough in advance. Uh, and then when it came, we were already getting ready to like, we're getting ready to do some more recording already, but we were getting, you know, demos done and all this stuff. And, you know, we like to be in a room together. We've all kind of come to that conclusion that we all like to sit in a room, kind of stare each other down, <laughs> you know, <laughs> work through parts and uh, songs together uh, as opposed to, oh, you know, online or, you know, over the course of multiple weeks through like session files and stuff through, you know, logic or pro tools and things like that. It's just, it, it's just not as personable and it misses that, you know, that important part where we're hanging out, you know, that's, that contributes a lot. So yeah, the, we had to slow down on the demoing, but, um, and you know, without getting too deep into things like there's, uh, there's some health concerns and stuff that, you know, within the band that, um, you know, we're, immune deficiencies can be a little bit more, you know, susceptible to, uh, this terrible virus and stuff. So we couldn't even like to, to roll the dice and risk, um, during the peak of things we couldn't do, but, you know, near the end there, we were, you know, getting, you know, fully distanced, masked up, um, you know, in the demos room and it was, it was, so you're able to adapt. You were able adapt. to adapt to the surroundings. And I, I completely understand where you're coming from as someone who just went through radiation treatment last year during oh, the height of the pandemic. I, uh, my hair is usually a lot longer than it is right now. So it is growing back slowly. Uh, we're looking I, I, great. So I, thank you. Thank you. You can still see some scarring around the head of where, where the radiation was going in, but thank you for saying that greatly appreciate it. Not, How not you feeling? Being, that? Uh, 
Hey, it's one day at a time, a new lease on life. That's all I can say. All right. Is uh, you sometimes have to take the good with the bad and uh, 2020 seemed to be the bad year. So 2021, here we go. That's um, right. But back to you and back to Prairie State. Um, the, uh, you've, like you said, you've recorded demos up until the potentially to release up until 2021 singles, you've got your album. Um, you've recently released a new song. I just want to make sure I got it right here. Hi that I'm writing. Yeah. So talk me through that because I've listened to it a few times and I love it. So talk me through how that song came about because uh, the process of putting out a single like that is always the hard because you have to choose what your song is going to be. And uh, a band of five is probably a little bit more difficult to do when you're a band of one or one person saying, I just want this song. So how did that song become the new single? Uh, Well, it's um, we usually decide if we're going to record it, it's got to be good enough to, to release period. So, yeah. you know, we, I think that session we sent in five demos to Bart McKay, who produce produces, you know, all the recent stuff for us. And, um, and yeah, that was a, that was a surefire pick for him. Um, and then as soon as we got in the studio and started adding a lot, you know, the dynamics to it, it just lifted and it, it it's just such a, yeah, it takes you when you get the little tingles and the uh, and the hair stands up on your arm, you know, you know, it's it's good. And uh, and so there's moments of that song that still get me, even though I've heard it, you know, thousands of times. But uh, yeah, it was just we, we'd written that with our friend Dan Davidson. And um, and yeah, it just felt it just felt like it goes fast and it makes you want to go faster. And all like it's all the good stuff that that we like doing as a band, like. Yeah, it just feels like it's meant for big stages and and uh, and if you're in your car, probably speeding tickets. So, hey, in Alberta, they're raising the speed limit to 120 in some locations. So let's speed all that we want. Right. Get out. I've had my head in the sand for a bit, so I, I must have missed that headline. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the uh, highway, I think it's two. I always forget the one between Edmonton and Calgary. 120. Let's do it. That means <laughs> so we're doing 130. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Um, so what's next? What is the band doing? Because like you said, the pandemic, hypothetically, knock on wood, with the vaccine rollout, the way that it yeah. is, everything's going to be done by September if we trust our prime minister. So <laughs> when can we expect uh, you guys to be back out on the road? Are you looking forward to getting back out on the road? Because that is the biggest thing that all bands are looking forward to. So I'm assuming you are the same way. Yeah, we miss playing live. I mean, we're a live band. That's uh, it goes without saying. So, um, yeah, we're we're as long as everything's safe to do so, we can't wait to get back out. But uh, we just we'd hate for people to rush it uh, right in this you know this last stretch and things go sideways. But yeah, we're already getting calls. Like uh, people are optimistic. Promoters are starting to get you know thinking that you know later summer it's it's going to be a go or at least a version of go i mean we're fortunate at least in alberta that space doesn't seem to be an issue so if it's an outdoor thing fingers crossed that uh, they'll just they can expand into their neighbor's uh farmer's field i don't know like there's <laughs> if they need the extra space it's there so um but yeah we're looking forward to it so i you know it's you kind of so Shake you prefer- your head. How, how, when's the last time you, we played live and loud, you know, like the online thing only you can't get your yayas out right with playing online. So no, and understandable, but for you guys, do you guys prefer playing those live large venues or will you from time to time enjoy those intimate moments where you get like, if, even if it's 40 or 50 people at a uh, backyard party that you can, or a bar that you can play at because, um, while the large venues can be amazing, I, I can imagine a band just enjoys playing music, right? So I can imagine that you want to play music for whoever wants to listen. So if it's a small venue or a large venue, so for you guys, does it is it both or is it just one? Now we love and we love playing, so it doesn't really matter where we're doing it. I mean, if we had our choice, I think it would be <laughs> if we're gonna be if we're gonna be uh, small and intimate. Let's really break it down. You know, let's do the songwriter circle sort of thing. Um, and, and let's do it like that. Or, you know, a, a proper acoustic session, um, where, you know, doc can break out all these like cool string things that he can play, you know, and it's, 
that's awesome. But then, and then on the other side, we just, we love playing big stage and lights. Like it's these songs that are, that we've been putting out lately just feel like, um, they're destined you know, it, for a large stage. It seems like it, it. Yeah. And especially like, I mean, you hear it in high that I'm writing that last third of the song. It just, uh, yeah, you can almost see the light show, <laughs> you know, like hopefully we can afford the light show to begin with, but like I can see it. So yeah, those are the two things like really either we're going to break it down and do it properly or let's just go big. <laughs> Well, you, you you can say you can afford the light show because you've toured with some pretty uh, big names in uh, the four you, years you've, you, you've been out. So you have to admit that sometimes, even if you don't think you can afford that light show, you can afford that light show if you're a tour with those names. <laughs> well, we've been we've been lucky. We, I mean, we've got to play, a, a, you know, a few one off shows with some with some really great artists. Um, the, the tours, uh, you know, we, we got to. Those things are usually for, you know, independent bands. They can they can be pretty costly. So we got to be smart about those. But yeah, we're we're ready. We're ready to go. So but then Big Valley Jamboree as well. That was awesome. That was like that's that the pinnacle nice. of Cal uh, or Alberta country music right there. If you get on the stage of Big Valley, you you've made it right. Yeah. And that <laughs> night was so cool because it was with Charlie Major and Brothers Osborne. So there was like this, you know, Canadian fanboy moment with the you know the goat you know the, he's <laughs> he's so awesome charlie major he was just he was killer and what was intimidating was you know when we were playing our set there's just this guy with a big leather jacket and big shades standing on the side of the stage like this for the whole set and it just i felt like oh man we're gonna get dragged off a of stage somebody's super pissed but it was Charlie Major watching our set and he was just he somebody told us afterwards like he was bobbing his head the whole time. Oh, like wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it was awesome. And then Brothers Osborne, like we're just huge fans of them. So to see um, you know, that band is just killer. So it was awesome to to be able to hang out and watch those guys. But yeah, that was a that was a fun night. That was a that was a great night. So looking back on the four years, because this is this is the part, the retrospect of the part is you You've you've played one of the biggest uh, venues in Al Alberta's country music history. You've had shows with uh, great names. Have you enjoyed it? Oh yeah. Have, have you enjoyed the last? <laughs> hey, you never know. I've had that one musician that said, "You know what? There's been some bad times, and I would do it all over again, but I'd do it differently." Nah, it's it was like you know, there's moments where we're working nonstop, like either you know doing all the the 95% of the music business is strictly business, you know? So since we're independent, we're doing all our own paperwork and, you know, setting up uh, everything that we're doing, like building a team and all that stuff, but we're doing it on our own. So there's a lot of like late nights and, and working through Saturdays and Sundays and stuff like that. They just, but uh, I can't, I don't know who said it, but like, you know, find a job you love you'll never work a day in your life and and that's kind of what this is it's it's has it's it been a, unrealistic for you because to to put out music that you love to do what you do is great but then you hear yourself on the radio station the local radio stations or you're hearing your the fans in the audience sing your songs that oh yeah. you're going well whoa, 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 what is this all about you should know my songs we're just some band from edmonton and now you're singing our songs with us so how does that feel as well looking back on the four years. Yeah. I remember the, the first time we were, I can't remember where we were playing, but uh, it was a bunch of faces we'd never seen. And we were playing just maybe, which is still one of our most popular songs uh, on streaming and, and uh, got to the first chorus and people started singing along and you could hear it. And <laughs> I remember Matt just kind of looking back. It was like, what's going on? <laughs> but it, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, can't really describe it it's tough to focus after that happens though. You're like, uh, you're kind of in it and you know, all of a sudden you start making wrong notes cause you're just, you're so floored by the, the feeling that this is happening. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. And what's your, what's your relationship like with the fans? Because that's the one thing that musicians always love is their relationship. Are you, are you guys one of those people that enjoy that reaction of people singing along that they want, they're screaming your names up in the middle of the songs. They, they want you to play a certain song or are you guys more of a laid back saying, you know what, we're going to play our music and we love that you love our songs, but we yeah. got a set list. So will you adapt to what your fans are asking or requesting? 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we're ever going to be, you know, looking for people screaming our names. That's just kind of, that's, that's a little <laughs> weird, but I think it's, uh, it, people are shouting out for songs. That man, means a lot that, that you, you created a, a song or something that resonates with them enough that they're, they're actually calling for it and they're, they're wanting it and they're, they're coming out to see it. Those, that's pretty cool. That's, and, and again, you know, we're just about trying to make the best music possible and the best, write the best songs possible. So for, for somebody to be shouting out a, a song title or, or actually singing along, that's, that's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean, like if somebody, uh, we try and have everything rehearsed, ready to go. So, I, I mean, I don't know, we'll see. If somebody calls out something that's that's an audible, that's uh, some deep cuts. Once our catalog starts getting bigger and they start calling out deep cuts, it's going to be that'll be cool. So what? Uh, so talking about that, talking about the catalog, what's next? What's is there potentially a new album going to be released here soon? Because I know you said you're doing demos, but is there a potential release of a second album? Yeah, so we got an EP that's coming out uh, probably end of April, early okay. May, and so it'll be the collection of all the singles that we've put out so far from every little town that started in January of 2020 all the way through high that I'm riding. And then also a new one that actually, I just got an email about 30 minutes ago that the master is complete on this new single. So it'll include a, a song that's uh, called fall asleep alone that um, it's, it's our power ballad moment. It's, it's something else. <laughs> well, dude, so I, I'm assuming you don't know the exact date when that gets released then. Or no, you... I, we're shooting, like I said, we're shooting for end of April, beginning of May, but. Um, so this so that... comes out in June. So I'm assuming it will be out by June. I, oh, hopefully yeah, it will they're... be coming out in June. So let's talk about this, this, the power ballot. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, uh, we joke that it's, it's destined to be on the Armageddon 2 soundtrack <laughs> whenever they decide to make Armageddon 2. But uh, yeah, Armageddon two still getting, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's something like it's. Uh, so what's it what's we, the song about? Uh, it's about being on the road or, or being away from a loved one. This, I mean, is specifically about you know being a band and you're you're out on the road and you're and you're playing all these stages in front of all these people and uh, you're chasing this dream, but then at the end of the night, the only dream you're chasing is the uh, your loved one at home. So it's, so it's kind of like you're, yeah, it's really this, this, you're torn between, you know, the, yeah, being, making music for a living and also the, the, the people that you care about that, that so, are back home waiting for you. So the follow-up question has to be asked, is it art imitating life or life imitating art in this situation? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's never easy to be away from loved ones when you're out playing uh, on the road and stuff. Uh, it's, um, you know, it's always that the first couple of days you're out on the road, you're like, yeah, we're out doing it. And then there's that kind of like middle part of the tour where you're like, all right, this is a lot of work. <laughs> and you start, you know, you really, it really starts to set in that you're not going to see somebody that you love for, for a little while longer. And then when you get home and it's just like, ah, this is, yeah, it's, everything's all right. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like an amazing song. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Time to get it out, yeah. And, and is, I'm assuming that's going to be available on all platforms, or how is that going to be released? Uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be released on all the traditional routes, and we're also in the works for, I, I mean, I can't say for certain if we're going to figure this out, but we're going to be trying to do some uh, cool um, mintable non-fungible token stuff so we're we're getting into the blockchain <laughs> <laughs> hey there you go um yeah. mike uh my last question for you is this and the uh prairie state is uh like i said it's an up-and-coming band you've you've had massive success over the last four years i wouldn't say up and coming because you guys have been established for four years now but you are a band uh edmonton band um how has uh, Alberta country music changed since you've started uh, performing? Oh, um, well, I mean, I can't say, like, until you get involved in the community, you don't really realize what's happening. Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And um, so once we started getting into the uh, country, country music Alberta community, it was, uh, it was so cool that everybody's so supportive. You know, like, you come again, like coming 
from, you know, young, when, when I was younger and in these rock bands and stuff, felt a lot more competitive for some reason. And I don't, I don't know why nobody wanted to share gear. Nobody wanted to share secrets or contacts or, or anything. And, um, they only wanted to share beers, you know, like they, you want, you just want to drink in buddies, but now it's like in, in country music, Alberta, it's like, everybody's willing to show up at each other's shows. Everyone's willing to uh, support each other online, you know, like bumping each other's social medias and, um, and, and everybody's just wanting to see each other succeed. So it's the, the community is, uh, nothing like I've, yeah, I've never really experienced anything like this and, you know, until we were in, in this band. So it's awesome. And it, to see it grow, like just this year, um, when they've, you know, they expanded the, the awards to include roots artists and you see that, that lineup that was just stacked, you know, and, um, it's exciting. It's an exciting time. There's a lot of really great, uh, emerging talent coming out of this province. Um, and it's just going to keep getting better. Um, they, uh, they've done a really amazing job at country music, Alberta, you know, with the rebrand and, uh, really opening the doors to anybody and any, everybody who, you know, wants to be, you know, involved in country music, which is great. And, and on the flip side of that, uh, and I, I said, that was my last question, but you've opened okay. up a can of worms. Yeah. Um, you, you said that it was a very open experience where people were collaborative with you. They would help you out uh, if uh, like share stuff on social media. Have you done that for the new artists that are coming out? Because every day there's a new artist on the scene. They want to get their word out. So if a person comes to you or a band comes to you and says, Hey, we, we need some help. We need to, we need to sit and talk with someone who's gone through the process. Are you guys open? like that oh yeah and i mean part of it too is that sometimes people are just afraid to ask questions or anything like that or you know come across as oh i don't want to look silly you know asking a question that you know well there's no bad dumb questions and that sort of thing so it's like yeah if, if anybody wants to know something or how we did something i'm happy to share like um you know we did have our failures and and those are the things that a lot of artists uh, if they can bypass those things that's awesome, you know. Um, but yeah, we've we've never been afraid to ask people for you know for help or or ask people questions on how they, you know, jumped over this certain hurdle in their career. Um, and I don't think people should be intimidated or anything to ask us for advice. But yeah, it's. Uh, so what would yeah, be the advice books. that you'd give? What would the advice be for the the uh, up and coming artist who wants to start a band, who wants to get out there and uh, break into the country music scene in Alberta? What would the advice be to them? Be, um, I mean, I think the one thing that we've seen for us that has really worked is just stick to growing, stick to the growth. It's a, it's 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 not going to be an overnight thing, you know. Somebody else's uh, stream counts you never compare yourself to what somebody else's stream counts are going to be like you have, this is your path and you, you know, um, nobody's going to care about it as much as you are. And you gotta, you gotta put, put the time in and, uh, and, and you'll get there, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just sticking to it. Half, half of it is just being relentless and, uh, and not giving up, but it's, it sounds cliche, but it really, it really is. And uh, what would the one advice be for the people who are thinking about starting a band with people that you might not know, like Prairie, uh, Prairie States did when they first started out? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Get get references. Check references very carefully. <laughs> Awesome. Mike, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Uh, for the listeners, I just want to let you know that in the show notes, uh, I will be linking the Prairie State's website address to it and all their social media pages. So go out, listen, follow them. They are amazing. Uh, hi that I'm riding. Uh, please download and listen to that song. It is amazing. And then look out for their up and coming single from the movie Armageddon to Armageddon. <laughs> so, uh, still getting <laughs> Still getting, and I apologize. I forget the name of it. You said it quickly. So the name of that Fall Asleep song, Alone. Fall Asleep Alone. Uh, yeah. When it comes out, I will link that in the show notes as well. So, Mike, thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you for having me. And one quick thing. I, I know people always ask us, they like, well, what's the best thing we can do to help out an independent artist or something? Like, what's the best way to, 
that, that we can support you. And, um, you know, like obviously coming and going to shows is, is fantastic, but the little, th- the, the smallest thing you can do is, you know, by going, listening online, if you're on Spotify or Apple music or whatever the platform is, put the heart next to the song, like just actually like it, save it. Those little things go a long way for, for artists who are uh, just trying to, to cut through and, uh, and make their way. So, um, but yeah, that's anyways, I just wanted to chuck that in there. And so, thanks so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, you no problem. This. And and like Mike said, go out and uh, hit that heart or like or share that song. Get the get the word out there for those independent artists, including the Prairie States. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Thank you once again for listening to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. If you love this episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast, head over to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. All the links to our social media accounts are in the show notes or visit www.crossborderinterviews.ca. The Cross Border Interview Podcast was produced and edited by Miranda Brown and Associates Incorporated. Be sure to tune in for our next episode of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Once again, thank you. Whoa!